What's happening Hardscapers? Today we're going to talk about open graded base and the applications that I use it for a retaining wall build. Let's get into this. Now open graded base is where we use a three quarter inch angular crushed clean stone. That clean refers to that there's no fines in it, there's no sand, there's no dust. And on top of that base material we use a quarter inch or three eighths inch clean crushed stone as well. That's no fines also on top of that also referred to as HPB. And because there's no fines in these materials that water just works its way through the system and down and out as opposed to a dense graded base where you're looking at a three quarter inch crushed stone down to fines. So you get quite a bit of sand in there. And then on top of that, you add a bedding material of concrete sand. But in our business, we still stick with HPB for our bedding layer. And when you add those fines into it, that's going to add a little bit more friction for that water to pass through. And it's gonna take a little bit longer for it to drain appropriately, especially when you get that compaction of that material that you're looking for with your build. This open grade base is really great for those climates that experience freeze thaw cycles because that water is not going to stay in the base as long so you won't get the same freeze thaw heaving and settling that you may experience with a dense graded base. In addition to that it's much easier to compact. You're just essentially reorganizing that three quarter inch crushed stone with the vibration to be able to fit nicely together and just pouring out the material it's already mostly compacted you're just running your plate compactor over it to get that final compaction whereas with a dense graded base you're running that plate compactor and getting a nice heavy one that is able to output a solid pounds of force with an appropriate frequency to be able to settle that material down while also adding water to make sure it's moist enough to be able to compact in addition to that it's more workable so if it's raining on the day that you're installing the base it's going to be a lot easier than if you're installing a dense graded material which has sand in it it's going to be sloppy it's going to be moving around all over a place on you and it's going to make a complete mess whereas the three quarter inch crush stone much less of a mess much more workable in these conditions and in addition to that you're not going to experience the same washout that's during that construction process if it was to rain on your bedding material on your base material but also afterwards that washout is really important but if you want to learn more about open graded base versus dense graded base in the description below there's going to be a link to open graded base versus dense graded base of video that we've already created on that but when it comes to an actual retaining wall build there are areas in which we will use a dense graded base and then there are other areas which will use an open graded base it all depends on the application and it's important to learn about these different base preparation methods so that you can choose the correct one for your application. You can even use a synthetic base for a retaining wall build. We've never done that. It's not something that I would really use in many applications just because when we're installing a synthetic base, it's usually a patio as opposed to a retaining wall. And that patio is built on a slope. And if we build our retaining wall on that same slope of that synthetic base, it's just not gonna work out. That's, that retaining wall needs to be level. And you can add concrete sand on top top of your synthetic base to be able to level your retaining wall but over a long run that retaining wall is going to start to be exposed so the only thing that we've actually done on top of the synthetic base other than pavers or slabs is a gas fire feature and that works out really well because it's a shorter run and you're not going to run into the retaining wall starting to poke above those pavers. But where do we use open graded base and where do we use dense graded base in a retaining wall build? Well, it really comes down to the slope building up to or down from your retaining wall. In this case, we have a retaining wall build where it actually slopes up to the retaining wall. And if we were to install a open graded base here, we can actually quite easily build an outlet from our base material away from the retaining wall to allow that water to work its way out. Now, some will argue that that outlet is not as important, especially if you're building on top of a sandy subsoil, which is going to allow that water to soak into it. But once you get into that clay material, that dense clay material, that's not gonna allow water to saturate into it and work its way out of that base, you really want somewhere lower for that water to work its way out from. So if you're going open graded base, that water is gonna work its way down into the base material and lower than your wall six to eight inches because that's what the the depth is that we prepare our base material for retaining walls along with that six inch embedment of the actual retaining 
retaining wall, so it's already down about 12 to 14 inches. And if we're building on top of a dense clay, it's just gonna sit there and saturate and it's got nowhere to go. But with the slope building up towards the retaining wall on this project, we can dig an outlet for that water to move away from from the base. However, if we're building a retaining wall and that slope is level to the retaining wall, or even sloping down towards the retaining wall, there's no outlet, there's no lower area in which we can allow that base to actually drain into, unless it's on the sides of the retaining wall that allows us to slope into a swale of some sort. But it's in these cases where we'll use a dense graded base because that water will not soak as rapidly into our base material. So we've got that three quarter inch clean backfilled area where that water is gonna percolate down and hit our drainage pipe and actually work its way through the face of that retaining wall. Or preferably out the sides of the retaining wall, but just depends on how long that retaining wall is and how many face outlets that you're going to need for the proper construction of that retaining wall. It's also important to note that the base material that you use for your retaining wall construction is going to affect where that pipe placement, that drainage pipe placement in behind the wall is going to rest. If it is an open graded base, it's going to rest actually lower in that base material, in that drainage area, so that that water that starts to accumulate will hit that drainage pipe and then move its way out of that system. Whereas if it's a dense graded base, that drainage pipe is actually gonna sit above the base material rather than inside of the base material. That's because as that water starts to move its way through the drainage area, it will start to accumulate, especially if it's a heavier rainfall, it'll start to accumulate on that base material, it'll hit that drainage pipe, and then it'll move its way out of the system. So a dense graded base allows you to elevate that drainage pipe in your system, which works better for moving that water out of that system if you do not have a lower area in your property to drain the water out from. Now this may vary from hardscaper to hardscaper. I'd love to know what you do for your retaining wall builds. Do you go solely open graded base or do you prefer a dense graded base system for this? What are your thoughts and your comments? Leave them in the comment section below. I'd love to know everybody's base preparation materials for a retaining wall build and why you actually go about the way you do for your retaining wall builds. And if you want more information on this, we do have a course available for DIYers as well as courses available in our members only platform where we house our headquarters software where you can use this course for training purposes, onboarding purposes for your employees or for you yourself if you're just starting your own hardscaping business. Link is in the description below. Like this video if you found it helpful for whatever reason and subscribe to this YouTube channel for more hardscaping content like this. Thank you so much for watching.